In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to not do what I just showed. When I first started flying drones almost a decade ago, I had no clue what I was doing and I ended up crashing a bunch of drones. But over time, I've kind of learned exactly what to do and not to do to prevent that from happening. So I decided to compile all of those things together and make a video about it. These apply to both classic drones as well as FPV. The last one that I'm gonna talk about is literally the number one reason that I see people crash drones. So make sure you stick around to see that. Okay, so let's start out with one that I had to learn the hard way several times throughout the years and that is before you fly, always look around for cables and power lines. These things are a drone pilot's worst nightmare. First off, they're tiny, so you usually don't see them on your screen when you're flying. And then also obstacle avoidance usually doesn't catch them just because they're so small. And this is something you have to be especially careful about, especially if you're flying around roads, like chasing a car or something, because usually they run power lines parallel or sometimes across roads. So whenever you're about to fly, just really take a second and look around and identify any places that there could be cables. Cables. And sometimes these can be hard to spot, so whenever you are looking for them, just look for the power poles themselves. Here's a good example of an FPV flight that almost ended in disaster for me because I didn't follow that rule. I kind of figured that the power lines were just way up high, but I didn't realize that there was cables going down to kind of stabilize the power poles and almost wrecked. I ended up being fine, but it was super sketchy and it could have ended in disaster. All right, so number two is something that is actually really simple and practical, but could end up in disaster if it does happen to you. All right, so a little story time here. A couple years ago, I was on a motorcycle trip, and of course, I brought my drone and Flew it for the first part of the trip and everything was all good. And where we're going on these motorcycle trips are these super rural places. So really far out, no big cities. It's out of the US, so Amazon doesn't exist. And I go to pull my controller out and one of the little stick joystick thingies is just missing and I can't find it. And especially on a trip like that where there's literally no way for me to get one even if I wanted to, it can make your drone completely useless and it's just this tiny little piece. So I ended up taking a paper clip and kind of making like a makeshift one where I was like stabbing my finger every time I was flying and it was really floppy, but it did kind of get the job done. So just make sure you keep track of those little things and honestly, it's a good idea to bring extras if you can because especially when you're traveling, they're really difficult to find. The next thing is super super simple and kind of related, but that is to always bring extra propellers. Crashes happen, and usually when you crash a drone, you're not destroying the entire drone, but the most common thing that does break is the propellers. So whether you're flying FPV or drones like the Mini 4 or something like that, just always make sure you have an extra set. It's just another one of those tiny things that takes up no space in your bag, but can really save you in an emergency. And it can mean the difference of getting your dream drone shot or not. What's up guys, before I get into the next mistake, I wanna ask you a question. Out of the clips that I'm showing right now, which ones do you think are AI? And which ones do you think are real? If your answer was, all of them are AI, you'd be correct. These were all created with Artlist's brand new Gen AI tool. It's the only AI generation tool made specifically for creators and it is so, so simple. So let me show you how to do it. So first off, you just have to think of a concept. Maybe it's a clip that you forgot to film or just something where you wanna just be creative and abstract. All you have to do is just pull up Artlist's Gen AI tool and pick a style. There are a ton of options for this, but let's do photo realistic. Let's say I'm making a film about some apocalypse scenario and I want a shot of a car on fire. Setting a car on fire is very, very expensive, so let's see if we can generate it here. So I'm first gonna just generate a couple images by typing in a prompt. Let's say car engulfed in flames at night on the highway. Choose your aspect ratio, how many images you want, and then hit generate. From there, I get three images, so I'm gonna pick which one's my favorite and then click the animate button. AI will fill in a prompt for you if you want, but you can also just write your own. And boom, here's the result, which is insane. Now, I'm a filmmaker and I love actually shooting stuff out on location, especially with a drone. But sometimes you just forget to get certain shots and then other shots are just not possible to film. And that's where Gen AI fits in for me. 
The craziest part is that is just one of the amazing tools that Artlist offers creators. On top of music, sound effects, stock footage, templates, and a ton more. And if you want to test this feature out for yourself, hit the link down below and you'll get two free months on me. Thank you Artlist for sponsoring this video and thank you for just constantly pushing the envelopes and helping us as creators. Okay, now back to the video. All right, so next up, I'm gonna switch gears and talk about some filming mistakes that I've made over the years and I see people doing all the time. And that is not backing up your footage or swapping SD cards. It's happened to me several times throughout the years where I got like the most insane drone shot. I was so excited about it. And then on the next flight or a couple flights after that, I lost the drone and lost all of that footage. It's one thing to lose the drone, which is obviously super expensive and really frustrating, but that is something that's replaceable. Your drone shots are not. So just make sure to constantly be backing up your footage, or if you don't have your computer or the option to back everything up, just bring extra SD cards. With normal DJI drones, it's a little bit more rare that you actually lose the drone with all their safety features and the return to home stuff, but FPV, it's pretty common to lose the drone. You do not wanna lose a whole trip's worth of footage just from one crash. And how I judge when I switch SD cards is kind of based on the sketchiness of the flight. Over the years, I've just learned to travel with a ton of SD cards. A really good example of this is a few years ago, I traveled to Iceland to film the volcanic eruption that was happening there. And flying over the volcano is super sketch. So I brought like 15 SD cards and in between every single flight, I swapped SD cards. And kind of the idea was to just get increasingly closer down to the lava and sketchier and sketchier until potentially the lava actually gets the drone. But at least you know you have all the footage from before. On literally the last flight, I was flying and got hit by a huge chunk of lava lava. Somehow I actually ended up recovering it, but when it first happened, I thought for sure the drone was gone. I recommend using pro-grade micro SD cards. They're just super fast for offloading and filming, but you can also buy cheaper ones from like 10 to 15 bucks. So it's a worthwhile purchase. I'll leave links down below to the ones that I use. Okay, mistake number five is accidentally turning off your sensors while you're flying. Most modern drones come with some form of obstacle avoidance, whether it's just front, just back, or full 360. The Mini 4, the Mavic 3 Pro and the Air 3S all have 360 obstacle avoidance, which is so nice just for peace of mind when you're flying, especially when you're going sideways or backwards. Normally, if you're about to hit a tree or something, like whether you're flying backwards or sideways, the sensors will catch that and prevent you from doing that. But sometimes people, people being me on several occasions, accidentally turn the obstacle avoidance off by engaging sport mode, which is basically just like a faster setting for the drone. It's a sneaky one because you don't have to change anything in the menu and it's easy to forget that the sensors get turned off when you do that. And this is especially sketchy when you're flying a drone like the Mavic 3 Pro or the Air 3S when you're really zoomed in because you kind of have no idea what's directly around you. And sometimes I'll turn on sport mode to get more movement in the shot, especially when you're zoomed in. And yeah, just plow straight into something. It's really unfortunate. So just be extra careful when you're flying in sport mode and if you are going backwards or sideways honestly it's better to just keep it on normal mode so you get those sensors all right number six is if it is windy try to plan your flight path where you're first flying into the wind as opposed to flying with the wind usually when flying a drone in windless conditions you can fly out as far as you want and as long as you come back before 50 percent battery you'll be able to make it back to yourself i would not recommend going to 50 you usually want to come back around like 60 or something like that but if it's super windy let's say the wind is going this direction if you take off the drone and fly with the wind you might get down to like 50 or 60 percent battery try to come back to yourself and just not be able to make it this happened to me several years ago i was in positano in italy which is right on the coast and it's just really windy and i just flew my drone straight out over the ocean and then i got my shots was having fun and stuff and then i turned back to come back to myself and it was getting some shots and the drone just was not moving or it was going really, really slow compared to how fast I went out. So just something to keep in mind, if you are gonna fly pretty far away from yourself and it's really windy, try to go against the wind first so the journey back is easy. And if this does happen to you, a good tip is usually how air currents work is every couple hundred feet, the wind sort of changes direction or at least changes how fast it is. So if you're trying to come back and you're just not moving anywhere, either drop really low or go up a little bit higher and give that a try. All right, so number seven is specifically when you're flying from some sort of moving object. So think a car or a boat. So when you take off a drone, the home point automatically sets itself to that location. In other words, it doesn't follow where you are. So let's say you take off a drone and you're following yourself in a car and you've driven 
3,000 meters or something like that. The drone is still really close to you, so you have enough battery to get back to yourself, obviously, but the drone thinks the home point is super far away. So even if you have 40% battery or something like that, the drone might try to turn back around and go back to where it started. And if you somehow lose connection to your drone during this process, like let's say the car is kind of behind a ridgeline or something like that, the drone's just gonna go straight back to where it started and land no matter what's there. This is especially problematic if you took off from a boat. Water landings are not dope, but you can just easily go into your settings and change your home point to either your controller or where the drone is right now. I always just choose a controller. So that's a simple tip that can save your ass in certain situations. Okay, next up, I wanna talk about flying over water. So if you're on a body water that has a little bit of a swell and is moving up and down, the surface of the water changes height. So your drone will stay at the same height, but the boat will move up and down. And this is really difficult when you're trying to land. If there's big waves, I would recommend just kind of waiting until a calm period or just making sure you have a little bit of extra height. Water is one of those instant death landing situations, so you have to be really careful. And then another side note about flying over water is even if you're not on the water, you gotta be really careful when you're flying over it because let's say you're flying over like a small pond. When you get down to surface level, reflections can be really deceiving. So just give yourself a little bit of an extra buffer. Okay, so number nine is to be careful around birds. When you fly a drone, you have to realize that you are sharing the sky. And some birds get super, super pissed off when they hear a random, super loud buzzing sound in their airspace. Last year, I was flying my drone in Alaska and all of a sudden this huge shape kind of came in and it was a massive bald eagle trying to attack my drone. And in the past, I've had drones actually knocked out of the sky just because a bird was super pissed off at it. So again, before you fly, just kind of check the airspace, look around and see if there's any birds around. But sometimes it's kind of unavoidable and I do have a couple things that can help in a situation if a bird is attacking you. Most of the time what I see people do is like when they see a bird attacking them they just sit and hover in place and just kind of look around but all the while this bird is swooping around hunting the drone. So if you do see a bird chasing you, the worst thing you can possibly do is just sit in one location. The best thing to do is to always stay in motion because obviously a moving target is harder to catch and then gain altitude. For a drone, gaining altitude is really easy, but for a bird, it's not. So gain altitude, get out of the way and just kind of clear the airspace. Before we get into the last one, which like I said, is the most common way that I see people crashing drones. I just want to take a quick second to let you guys know that if you are interested in color grading any of your drone footage, exactly like you see here on this channel. Last year, I released my LUT collection, which is just a package of four simple LUTs that can be used for any type of footage out there that just gives your footage that cinematic look. So if you wanna support the channel and just get something that will help you make your drone footage look the best it can, link is down below. Okay, so this is the last one is the number one way that I have crashed drones and the number one way that I see other people crashing drones and that is flying from boats. This is slightly related to the one I talked about before, but also very different. So on boats, there is a ton of stuff to run into. There's mast lines, there's towers, there's ropes, and all of that stuff is absolutely deadly for a drone because all around the boat is all just this big death zone where if your drone goes in, you're cooked. And if you're flying from the boat, the boat also moves. And what's different about a boat than a car is it is much easier to stop a car. So you can stop a car, take a drone off, get your shot, stop the car, get the drone back. But boats are much harder to stop. Sometimes if it is a big boat that you're flying from, you don't have the option to stop. Like for example, last year I got hired by this cruise ship company to film a bunch of drone stuff for them. And flying FPV was actually less sketchy than a regular DJI drone because what happens is the boat is moving and you take the drone off, but instantly the drone's GPS wants it to stay in the same location and just shoot off behind the boat because the boat is moving. And this is especially sketchy when you're landing. And when you're landing from a boat that is moving, usually it takes two people because if you think about it, let's say the boat is moving this direction. I'm on the back here trying to catch my drone. So if I bring the drone back, it'll just like come and it'll hover in front of me for a second but as soon as I take my hand off the stick to grab the drone, it wants to lock in that GPS location. So the second that I take my hand off the sticks, 
the drone is going to go like that. So if you're trying to land on a boat, it's super helpful to have a second person because then you can control the drone directly down and then someone else can grab it. Launching is easier than retrieving, so I just recommend stopping the boat for both situations. And if you do have someone to help you launch and land, definitely do that. Okay guys, that is officially it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope some of these will help you out in the future. If you don't have a drone yet and are in the market, I'll leave links to my top recommendations down below. And I have a bunch of videos about those on my channel if you do wanna go check those out. Links to the LUTs are down in the description as well. But that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.